Hello and welcome to another in our videos of product demos. Now this one is just around some simple um, formatting. So we're so used to in Excel particularly just being able to colour cells in a particular way to indicate whether um, they should be filled in with data, so to guide the end user or whether the values are up or down against a base, so things like that. And um, I think there's a feeling that just when it comes to really simple formatting in Anaplan, so that, that kind of formatting where you maybe just want to colour uh, the cells to, to give your users a guide as to where they should be putting the data, that somehow that, that maybe isn't possible. Now it's not done in the same way as in Excel, but by using uh, the conditional formatting function, you can achieve the same result. And um, actually by using the line items, so basically creating line items to to govern how you want the formatting to work you can pretty much create anything you want and the freedom with the um, with the formulas in Anaplan does allow you to get very creative in saying how you want the uh, the color of the cells the color of the grids to to look and feel so to show this I've just got a really simple module here very imaginatively titled formatting demo and uh, I'm just going to take you through what I've done and just a, a brief demo of how I've achieved it and then hopefully they'll just give you the idea of what you can do and then how you can take it further in in your own environments so you'll see I've got two line items here they're list formatted uh, there is another video in our series it's to do with how you, you can do selective and dependent access on uh, line items that are list formatted so if that's something that interests you you can find that on the website or on our YouTube channel Channel. Uh, but for this on conditional formatting, as I said, these are uh, list formatted, this one dependent on that one. And what I've done is I've imagined a scenario where if you filled one in, you have to fill in the other. That's the logic, that's what's going to drive data elsewhere in the model. Let's just say, for example, in the PNL. So you could see by default at the moment, all the detail cells are yellow. So what I'm trying to create here is I'm imagining a data dashboard where I want to guide the end users and say anything that you see colored in yellow is what you should be filling in. Now that might be because that's what they're used to doing on a, say, an existing Excel template and you want to keep that look and feel. So I can see here I'm going to go into March that's yellow I need to fill that in. Choose the department that I want to in this case and then you can see it goes red so what I've done is I've set up some logic that says okay that's fine this should appear yellow to indicate you need to fill it in but if they only fill in one line item it should go red because they need to fill in both so now I fill in both and it goes back to being yellow so you can see the flexibility that I've managed to build in there and that's all being driven off of I've got a line here called conditional formatting And you'll see that's ones there all the way across. Now, if this wasn't dependent on anything at all and you just simply wanted to say they should be yellow, then of course you could just hard code that as one. What I've done is because I want a, something a little bit smarter, so the turning of the cells red when they haven't filled in both cells, is I've said that uh, if both are blank, so if is blank, the list formatting with item restriction, and is blank the formatting with dependencies than one. Otherwise, if uh, is not blank and is not blank then one. Otherwise, three. So if both are filled in or if both are blank, then one. Otherwise, three. Now, the re reason I've gone with that is if I show you how it's actually been set up, so they're done in exactly the same way. So I'll show you one and then it's just duplicated for the other. So if I edit that rule, so you can see it's not just a simple white or yellow, there's actually a three color scale in there. So that's the line item that I'm applying the formatting to. Obviously I've shown you that there uh, with item restriction, that's that line item. But I'm basing it on values in another line. So in this case, my uh, conditional formatting line that has my formula that says if they're both filled in or neither filled in, then one else three. So here's the reason I've gone with that three. I've got my minimum as zero because in theory that should um, 
that should never be zero in this instance. I've, I've said, if you remember, that if they're both populated or neither populated, it would be one. I then made the midpoint two. Now, this is a really useful trick. Um, a lot of customers that I've gone to and, and we've set this kind of thing up, they've just found the colors really, really bright. So for example, the yellow is really in your face, as in the green, for example, and they like it, but you just want it toned down a bit. So all you have to do is just play with the numbers here. So if I know that my value is going to be one, set the midpoint as two, and then rather than getting this really, really bright yellow, I know that my yellow is going to sit somewhere around here, just gonna be set off just a little bit, a little bit easier on the eye. And then my maximum is three. And then at that point, I'm saying, no, if they've done something wrong and it's red, then yeah, let's go in full red. It'll be really bright and really obvious. And that's it really. So I can apply that to both of those line items. As I said, it's exactly the same. There's no difference. And that then gives me that full control over how I want those cells to appear. So hopefully that gives you an idea of just how flexible it is. Okay, it's not the same as clicking, highlighting, and then just saying color the cells, but you can get the same effect and actually make it quite uh, intelligent as to how you want it to act. It's just using other line items to, to drive a calculation that gives you the basis for the formatting. Now to take that a little bit further, you can see I've actually got two other lines. Uh, that are hidden at the moment where I've got some formatting going on. So if I bring those across and also I'm just going to do that one at the same time. So here you can see um, I've got some slightly different formatting going on. Now I'm going to go with this one first. Uh, if I show you the rule, this is an example where it's actually just formatted on itself. So it's based on its own values. And all I'm doing is a really simple, if it's positive, I'm thinking that's a good thing, so it's green. And if it's negative, I want to highlight that in red. So again, it's another three color scale. So if I cancel out of there, that's good. That's bad. So again, just a really simple example there of how you can get some uh, idea of highlighting trends, for example, or good, in inverted commas, values versus bad values. So again, just a really simple trick there. This one, I've then done something just a little bit different, and I've said that that's against a property. It's actually against another line item here called uh, monthly quota. And that's looking up a property that we have against the uh, list that's been chosen here. So basically the department that's been chosen. So I can show you that. Here you see monthly quota. So 200, 300, 400, not very exciting. It's just for the purposes of this demo. So what it's doing there is again, similar to what I'd set up on here. It's doing a one or a minus one really or a zero, depending on uh, if there's data uh, that's been chosen, or sorry, that's been entered um, here. And it then looks to see is that up against that quota or down against that quota. And if nothing's been entered at all, then it defaults to zero. So if I show you, uh, actually, I'll just show you that formula just so you can see that. So. Again, we've got that caveat that if it's blank, then zero. Um, otherwise, it looks at this monthly value um, here. And uh, if that's less than the uh, monthly quota, looking up the department, then minus one. If it's greater than or equal to, then one, else zero. So again, just is it positive against the base or negative against the base? And then as you've seen now, it's quite straightforward. Three color scale, and again, red, nothing, or white, up into green based on the monthly quota. So again, just a slight variation on the first one I showed you, but sort of showing you how you can bring in uh, list properties or other bits of information that you might want to drive your conditional formatting. 
So I hope you found that useful and as always if you want to find out anything more about Innovar or the products that we sell then you can find us at our website innovar.co.uk.